Hello, uh, this video is all about how to parent your Aries child when you're a Scorpio mom or a Scorpio dad. I am Maria Rieger, your resident Gemini, and this is Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm going to give you a high level overview of Aries energy and then Scorpio energy. Then I'm going to hit the high points on what you need to pay attention to in this dynamic. I actually really like this sign combination. We're gonna talk about why that is. So uh, Aries energy, Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac, as I've talked about in other videos. Under modern astrology, Aries is ruled by the planet Mars. And I think that's a pretty good uh, combination, the Mars and Aries, it's, it matches up pretty well, according to uh, well-known astrologer Robert Hand in his book, Horoscope Symbols. He talks about the, uh, the ruling planets uh, and the signs and how well he thinks they match up. So uh, Aries definitely has a reputation for belligerence, uh, kind of a little bit of a, dare I say, warlike nature. The way I think of it is Aries is an extremely assertive energy. As I've talked about in other videos, it is an energy that uh, compels the chart holder to attack life, to assert itself, thrust itself on the stage of a life. It is very much an energy of I am here and I am present. It is cardinal fire. So cardinal modality means it is intent on moving forward, on advancement, on achievement. Um, it, is, it resists stagnation. Aries people tend to have a very restless energy about them. They don't like to be still for too long. That could mean like physically, they can't physically sit still or stand still for long periods of time. They may get bored easily at their jobs. They may like to like travel, move around, move residences. Uh, so that, that energy can manifest in different ways, but there is definitely a restlessness about the energy. Being a fire energy, it is an ego-oriented energy. That means that fire people have a more challenging time putting them in the shoes of the other person. If you think about it in terms of its opposite sign, so the opposite sign to Aries is a Libra. Libra is a one-to-one -one relationship-oriented sign. Libra, a cardinal air sign, tends to put itself very easily in the position of the other person in the relationship, almost too much. Libra people are almost too good at giving up their own autonomy to others and um, pleasing the other person. They orient themselves from the 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 position of the other person, so, such that a lot of, they risk a lot of the times. Libra risks kind of losing itself in the energy of the other person. So that's the opposite to Aries. So Aries is very much about itself about the ego, about its desires, not necessarily a bad thing. It's just the nature of the energy. Being cardinal fire, Aries energy needs to be channeled and directed in some way. I don't like to say controlled because you're really, uh, the parent's job is really to guide the child, not control the child or mold the child into what the parent wants. You got to parent the child you have, the one the universe gave you, not the one you wanted or the one you think would be easier to parent. You got to work with the child you have, right? So Aries fire energy definitely needs to be channeled or directed in some way. That can be through physical activity. That can be through intellectual pursuits. Depends on the propensity of the child. So Scorpio is fixed water. So fixed modality, meaning that it um, has more of a difficult time with transitions. I've noticed especially life transitions. People with heavy Scorpio energy in their charts have a more challenging time coping with really big life transitions. Okay. So if you have a Scorpio kid, you got to know that sometimes pay attention. You got to pay attention to the behavior, especially when they're going through like big life changes. It could be as they're growing up and going through developmental changes. It could mean like when, when if there's a um, divorce in the family or there's a new sibling in the family, or you move residences or you change schools, sometimes the behavior changes. And that can be an indication that they're having some difficulty coping with the transition. So fixed energy people, uh, not as comfortable with change as, as cardinal energy people are. So fixed energy people are more uh, prone to want to change things so they were like they were before. They like the stability kind of the, of the status quo, okay? 
Uh, nevertheless, life is all about change. So you have to deal, learn to deal with it. So water is a feminine energy, whereas fire is a masculine energy. So Scorpio people are more prone to make decisions based on what they feel the right decision to be, what they intuit the right decision to be. Their kind of default mode of decision-making is to go with their gut, go with their intuition, other than like weigh pros and cons or be super logical about things. Aries uh, energy can be a little bit more practical about decision-making. So that's a difference, kind of a key difference you need to think about. Now, we said that Aries is ruled by Mars. So under modern astrology, we consider Scorpio to be ruled by Pluto. That's a pretty good fit. I mean, there is definitely a, I don't like to use the term coldness. I don't like to think of a Scorpio person as cold. They're not emotionally cold, but there is, it's, it's a more reserved energy. It's a more private energy. So not cold necessarily, although they can present as cold because of the reserve nature of the energy, but it is definitely a more private energy. Now, Although under modern astrology, we consider Scorpio to be ruled by Pluto, in traditional astrology terms, Scorpio was considered to be ruled by the planet Mars. Okay. So there is definitely, in my opinion, a warlike aspect to Scorpio nature. And Robert Hand talks about this in his book, Horoscope Symbols. He says, Scorpio is the only water sign that will fight. I think that's largely accurate. Scorpio is more like the reluctant fighter. Aries tends to kind of look for a reason to fight. Aries likes to fight. It's an outlet. It's an outlet, uh, a way to, to unleash, let out that restlessness that Aries people have. That's kind of the stereotype of Aries, especially Aries men uh, looking for a reason to fight, right? Um, so... But yeah, Aries is, is very comfortable with the physical aggression, generally. That's the stereotype, okay? So Scorpio, uh, the warlike aspect to Scorpio nature is different. Scorpio, in my opinion, is like the reluctant fighter. When they feel that it's necessary, Scorpio people will, will grapple, will fight. When, when that's the last resort, all, all other... Methods have been extinguished and they have to fight. They will do it and they will fight, especially for loved ones. You'll see this when a Scorpio person feels that their loved one has been uh, treated poorly. They hate that because if it's somebody that they like in their inner circle who they have deemed deserves their loyalty, they are unendingly loyal to that person. As we've talked about in other videos about Scorpio, they will fight for that person. I've seen it and it comes out of nowhere. And it's like, wow, where did this come from? I've seen that. It's actually a very cool thing. So Scorpio, in my experience, is like the reluctant aggressor. They'll do it. They'll fight if they have to. And, and they'll like go to town on it. But um, so it's something interesting to keep in mind. It is an aspect where of overlap between both of these energies. That's my point with this whole diatribe, right? Is that this is an area of common ground. I think these energies have more in common than you may think at um, first look. So as we talked about in other videos, Scorpio uh, has a very intense emotional experience. They have to feel deeply. That is like the central element of Scorpio nature. They have to feel, they would rather feel negative, extreme negative emotions then feel nothing. It is a soul-driven energy. Whereas Aries is more ego-oriented, uh, Scorpio is soul-oriented. Scorpio people have to find some way of fulfilling their soul needs. Um, that is something to keep in mind, right? And since the Scorpio is the parent in the dynamic we're talking about today, this is something you need to recognize about yourself. Scorpio people like to probe. So Scorpio... Um, once they deem a person kind of worthy of their loyalty, they like to know everything about that person. So when the Scorpio is a parent, they like to really probe about what's going on with the kids. Okay. Aries is very independent. It's an independent energy. It likes to be unencumbered. It does not respond well to helicopter parenting by any means. So 
Uh, that's a big issue in this dynamic where the Scorpio is the parent is the Scorpio parent may tend to kind of hover or helicopter, not necessarily because that's the goal helicoptering. It's because clearly they feel bonded to the child and want to know everything about the child, what they're feeling, what they're going through, how they can help. Scorpio is a deeply empathic energy that identifies very strongly with the, uh, the emotions and feelings of the other person. So Scorpio has a lot of emotional empathy where they, um, uh, cognitive empathy is when we can kind of think of the situation from the other person's point of view. And emotional empathy is more like you are feeling the emotions as if you were the other person. And when the Scorpio is the parent, especially the mom, this tendency is very strong because us moms, we tend to bond very closely with our kids. That's the nature of the relationship. That's the way it should be. And when our kids are sad, we feel sad. When our kids are overjoyed, we feel overjoyed. You have to be careful about that because clearly that can lead to emotional burnout over time. But Scorpio parents have that, that very strong propensity and they want to learn everything about the kid. And when the, your kid is Aries, they're going to resist that most likely because they're very independent and they, they um, like to do things on their own and they don't like to that they don't feel comfortable all the time with that tendency to merge that Scorpio people have. They like to, Scorpio people tend to merge and almost blur the boundary lines between themselves and the other person in the relationship. That's why in so many of these videos, I talk about boundaries when I talk about Scorpio energy. So that's a big dynamic to be aware of. As kids get older, uh, become adolescents and teens, Natural childhood development is that they start to individuate from the parents, separate from the parents a little bit. They tend to be a little bit more oppositional to the parents and the parents' preferences. And this is very hard on Scorpio parents, especially Scorpio moms, because we have bonded so closely with these children and now they're starting this process of separating from us. And it can be a very, um, I don't want to say depressing, it could be a very sad time for parents realizing that, wow, these kids are getting older, separating from us as is normal, right? And eventually we'll leave the house. And there's a point in a parent's life where you kind of realize that this process is happening, you know, sooner than you would like to. And that's, that is, um, it's an important, uh, and kind of sad transition that not a lot of people talk about. It's like your kids aren't out of the house yet, but they're on their way out of the house and they're very independent, especially when they start to drive. They don't need you as much to like drive them places and you don't have that time, uh, captive time with them in the car that you used to. That's a big transition. And for a Scorpio parent, that can be kind of a depressing transition. It's not bad, right? It's, it's a normal part of the relationship, of the parent-child relationship, but it can be tough. Um, so acknowledge that, acknowledge that that's tough, right? And you could even tell your, your older areas child, look, you know, you're becoming more independent. You're, uh, exercising more autonomy, which is normal. And that's what we want to raise independent, you know, kids to be independent adults. But it's also just so you know, like some of my behavior is informed by the fact that this transition is difficult for me because I've been your mom for a long time or your dad for a long time. And I was used to you needing me. And now you need me less. They still need you. Arguably, in some ways, they emotionally need you more than when they were younger. But that need is not always apparent because they're physically independent. Okay. Um, the next big area I want to talk about is both of these energies are stubborn. Very stubborn. Remember, Aries is symbolized by the ram. They just kind of ram their way through life, through obstacles, right? And first sign of the zodiac associated with the first house, ego-oriented energy. They like things their way because they like things their way. Not necessarily anything wrong with that. It's just that Scorpio is similar. They they kind of like their things uh, things their way too, but for different reasons. Scorpio people uh, tend to feel some lack of control in their emotional experience because they're they feel so intensely and sometimes those intense emotions are overwhelming to them and it almost causes a paralysis and they feel very emotionally out of control, especially if, if uh, their parents didn't handle that experience and didn't understand that about them when they were kids. 
Uh, they could have been negatively conditioned to fe- to not not to uh, find good coping mechanisms for those overwhelming feelings. So one of the ways Scorpio deals with that sense of emotional overwhelm is to control surroundings, control environments, and control other people. It's not like control for the sake of control. It's control so that they have some stability in their lives. And remember, being a fixed sign, they crave that stability. Well, remember, you're the parent, so you're the one that sets the tone for this relationship. And the responsibility for this relationship is with you, because your kid just doesn't have the level of sophistication yet to navigate this relationship in a healthy way. So it's important to uh, find some system to compromise, to talk about things. So I'm a big believer in letting kids have their say. It doesn't mean you have to give them what they want. It doesn't mean you have to agree with them all the time. But you can let them have their say. You can let them talk, speak freely with you about their preferences and why they, the reasons why they may have preferences. So I, I see a lot of parents shut kids down before they even know what the kid is going to talk about. If the kid will start to explain something and they'll say, Stop explaining. I don't want to hear it. Whatever you have to say, the answer is no. Well, you don't even know what they're going to say. The problem with that approach is that eventually the kids will just not talk to you at all because you're always shutting them down or you're shutting them down a lot and they're not going to talk to you. And then what happens when they become adolescents, they become teens, they don't feel comfortable talking to you and approaching you. And if they're in trouble or really need your guidance, they're not going to feel comfortable coming to you. So I, my suggestion is that you let your kids have their say, and that if you don't agree or can't let them do something or can't give them or are good at preparing to give them whatever they're asking for or to uh, give them their preference, that's fine, but at least it, you've allowed them to speak their piece, okay? So a lot, um, uh, a lot of uh, the restlessness associated with Aries will be relieved a little bit if you let them have their say, if you let them talk to you always in a respectful manner, right? Because as I've said so many times on this channel, when kids practice these things at home with the parents, while they're practicing their own boundaries, practicing uh, self-championing, practicing uh, standing up for themselves, practicing uh, articulating preferences, they're ideally, they practice these things at home with the parents, right? And the parents can help guide them And then they can do that for themselves when they're adults. They can stand up for themselves. They can articulate what they're feeling. They can articulate why they have a problem with something or why they don't want to do something. Or they may uh, um, suggest an alternative to something that somebody has told them to do. So, you know, these are all, you can think of this as practice for adulthood. My point here in in this, uh, regarding this dynamic is to let your Aries child have their say. It doesn't mean you always have to give them their way, but you can at least let them uh, explain themselves and keep the dialogue uh, open. Now, the next big dynamic is boundaries. It's no surprise I bring up boundaries when talking about Scorpio and talk about Aries. Now, I've spoken a lot on the subject of boundaries uh, with Scorpio. Um, So you can check out my video on how to teach your Scorpio child healthy boundaries here. Um, I'll put the link below too. And uh, the issue with Aries is, as we've said, Aries, uh, people have a restlessness. They They do not always stop to consider the positions of other people when they make decisions uh, and take actions. And they tend to kind of you know, ram their way through life like the symbolic ram, which is associated with Aries energy. So again, you, the parent, are in charge of this dynamic, are in charge for uh, setting the tone for this dynamic. It is essential you teach your Aries child healthy boundaries, to respect the boundaries of others so that as they mature, uh, they can respect the autonomy of other people. So um, that means that you, the parent, yes, get to uh, have your own boundaries too and communicate your boundaries to your Scorpio child. Um, I have a whole section, a whole video on boundaries that I'll link below. So um, I won't go too much in detail about how to how to um, articulate and reinforce your boundaries. For now, know that it is essential that you uh, teach your Aries child healthy boundaries. This means respect the boundaries of the child Make sure the child respects your boundaries, articulate them in a healthy way, 
without control. Boundaries are not about controlling the behavior of the other person. Boundaries are um, particular to you. They are like kind of a protective shield around you. They are uh, largely about um, determining what you are responsible for, okay? And what you are not responsible for. So, but they are particular to you. They are not about rules and limits for other people and they are not about controlling other people. Yes, it is appropriate and a good idea to have rules and limits for kids at home, but that's not what we're talking about. A boundary is different from a rule or a limit. But Aries kids crave freedom. This is a good thing because you want to raise our kids to be independent, successful adults. And by successful, that they can uh, live on their own, advocate for themselves, pursue their own dreams, things like that. So the fact that Aries already has the natural propensity for independence, autonomy, to um, be on its own, do its own thing is great because you can use that to, um, <clears throat> to help your Aries child practice their autonomy and become more self-sufficient. Um, if you try to control your Aries child too much, it's going to backfire and it's not going to be pretty because they, I mean, think about trying to contain a fire, right? You can do it, it but once it's out of control, it's really hard to contain, right? Um, so yeah, and there's always a propensity with Scorpio energy to control for the reasons we talked about. It's not necessarily nefarious, but it's essential to allow your Aries child to express the age appropriate sovereignty. And it is kind of a fine line between being an authoritarian parent, where your main goal is just to get the kids to comply with your rules without any questions, and an authoritative parent, where you explain the reasons for the rules, where you have a back and forth open dialogue. It can be a fine line sometimes. And uh, like we said, it's perfectly reasonable and appropriate to have rules and limits at home. As I've talked about in other videos in our house, uh, we have very few hard and fast rules because I do not like rules. I like freedom. But the rules we have are usually for health and safety. There's a reason for the rules. So uh, with the Scorpio parents' propensity for control, if you're ever having difficulty determining whether a rule is fair or not, the test, I think the best test is ask yourself, what's the reason for this rule? And if you can articulate a reason, health, safety, sleep hygiene, all valid stuff. If you can articulate a reason like that, it's an appropriate rule. If you cannot articulate any reason for it, that's a good indicator that this rule is arbitrary and maybe it should be done away with. Okay, the next uh, area I wanna talk about is communication. There are big differences in how Aries and Scorpio communicate. Scorpio tends to internalize things. Um, as we said, it's a private, reserved energy. It tends to be private regarding its emotional experience. Unfortunately, a lot of Scorpio children I talk to, both Scorpio sun people and Scorpio moon, I mean, Scorpio adults I talk to have indicated to me that when they were children, they were shamed in some way for having those intense emotions. They were uh, they were taught not to show the emotions, for example, not to cry. They were taught that crying was bad or showing any negative emotion was bad. They were made to feel shame about that, that intense emotional experience. So what happens with Scorp is that tends to go deep underground, right? If that's, if that was the experience the Scorpio person had as a child. So um, that gives, that only intensifies the Scorpio propensity to be reserved and private about its emotional experience, okay? So they tend to internalize a lot of stuff. So uh, a Scorpio person, it's interesting because Aries is very different. Aries tends to externalize everything. Like the stereotype of the Aries adult is like getting mad and punching a wall. I'm not saying they all do that, they don't, but they tend to externalize stuff. Fire sign people, especially Aries and Sag, wear their emotions on their sleeves. You will know if they are angry, you will know. If they are disappointed, you will know. If they are irritated, you will know. If they are overjoyed, you will know. You will always know what they're feeling 99.999% of the time because they will tell you, they'll articulate it, or their behavior will clearly indicate, all right, that their emotion. So um, the, the heiress child often has trouble reading the Scorpio parent for these reasons. 
and there they are there can be a lot of communication um issues and clearly as we've said the parent is responsible for the relationship the parent directs the child uh parent relationship here so the onus here is on the scorpio parent to be an effective communicator so if that is you if you have issues communicating uh if you tend to shut down emotionally and not say anything and your feelings get hurt easily these are things you may have to address because what happens a lot of the time is the Aries child will will you know start to feel like they're causing all this distress in the parent. The parents shutting down. The parents not saying anything. The parents not even getting upset. And Aries child often will prefer the parent to like externalize their anger and frustration than to keep than to shut down and like keep it all inside. Because then at least the Aries child knows what's going on. When the parent internalizes everything, shuts down, completely withdraws, like becomes appears to become numb the child the Aries child a lot of the time will freak out because they don't know what's going on they would almost rather the parent externalize that stuff because that's something that they understand way more easily so um if that description of the Scorpio parent resonates with you you may want to consider how you're communicating and as kids get older it is perfectly appropriate to communicate with them about these things hey what you said kind of hurt my feelings or you said this and it was pretty blunt and you could have you could have said that to me in a nicer way or whatever. I'm irritated because of X, Y, Z. It has nothing to do with you. I'm just having a bad day at work or whatever. That way the kid is not, uh, you know, going to think that they're the problem. And no child wants to feel like a burden to their parents. And when I talk to parents, it's um, amazing to me how much is communicated to our children, how much we parents communicate to our children without words without articulating verbally articulating anything our body language is very communicative and a lot of the times we're inadvertently communicating to our kids that uh we are stressed and they think a lot of the times the kids think that we're stressed because of the kids and the kids start to feel like a burden because now mom and dad are stressed about whatever or irritated with whatever so you never want your kid to feel like they're a burden to you. Like we had these kids, right? We chose to have these children. So that's something you need to be aware of as a Scorpio parent, because you could be communicating a lot without even realizing it. Um, the other thing is on the subject of communication, Scorpio is an energy, as we've talked about in other videos, about that is craze vulnerability with other people but is also afraid of being vulnerable because they're afraid of being hurt and in other videos i go in detail about why that is um so when your kids are old enough and it's appropriate it is okay to like open up with them in an age appropriate way and be vulnerable often you will find when you do that it opens up a dialogue with your child and then they will share things with you that maybe they were not totally comfortable sharing before. So, um, and it can be something as simple as, I don't know, I, um, <clears throat> I thought of this one thing yesterday or I had this incident happen yesterday and it made me feel X. It could have nothing to do with the kid, right? But sometimes that that's enough to like open a dialogue with the child. And you'd be really amazed sometimes at what you're able to find out the important pieces of information that you're able to get from your kids when you open up like that. So um, if you have, if you're a Scorpio parent and you have work to do, you have that reparenting work to do, make sure you do that. So you're not shutting yourself off emotionally, even from your kids. We talked a lot already about empathy. Scorpio is great at empathy, great at teaching empathy, great at showing empathy. So make sure you are teaching your Aries child how to uh, identify with and have empathy with others. Definitely something they can benefit from being an ego-oriented sign. The last big thing I want to talk about is, uh, interestingly, this is another kind of area of common ground between these two energies, is Scorp and Aries both can be pretty relentless about pursuing what they want. Scorpio's energy is more under the radar. So the pursuit, the relentless nature of the pursuit sometimes is more under the radar. Aries is more externalized as we talked about, but that drive is something they both have in common. So this could be an area um, of commonality between these two signs where you can possibly bond with your Aries child. In closing, I'll remind you to fill your child's love bucket 
and power bucket. So with Aries, since it's a sign that craves independence and autonomy, you want to make sure you're giving them opportunities to make decisions for themselves, have a say in their world in an age appropriate way. Uh, if you want more, you can check out this video on Scorpio parents. And if you want more on Aries, you can check out my playlist on how to parent your Aries child. Thank you very much.